O2 Fisherman 1700. Quick video of it, kind of front to back. Two inch ball. It's got a four inch flat. Plug adapter. Um, I'm just kind of look at it. It's uh, it's got some dents in it, but every 2002 does. I, I upgraded the uh, the wheels to the the mag wheels. You know, it's the frame of the trailer is different because it's got the Herculiner on it, so it won't get rock chips on it. Uh, new fenders, all LED lights. Back to the hull itself. I wanted to get it out in the sun so you could kind of see. It's got a couple little, not really dents because they didn't even break the, the paint, but they're just impressions. I'm trying to give you a fair assessment of what this thing is. Anyway, got the bolt buckles on the back, which are outstanding. If you've never had them, you should probably get them. They're the best thing ever for quick launch and release or uh, trailer. It does have a swim platform on the back. I did not mention that before. It's got the uh, transfer saver. And also it's a... Uh, a vengeance prop, stainless steel. That's a 16 pitch. It's not perfect, but it's pretty darn good. I think that's the worst spot right there. But works fine. And the other side, kind of the same look. I wanted to get it in the sun so you could see. There's a little thing there. There's a little one up, kind of a longer one up the side. And all that stuff is basically from, you know, hitting the dock or carelessness, I guess. But that's why you buy a Lund. Same thing over here, same wheels. Tires are, gosh, not even one season old, I don't think. I don't have anything to put in there, but you see the tread's still pretty decent on there. I'd say about... 90% roller trailer, obviously. Trolling motor. And I bought the, uh, the ram connector for it. So it ties it down so it doesn't bounce. Going down the road, stays solid. It's got the rails on the front. I put a... Uh, Rod holder on this side and also one on that side. I usually fish from up in the front. And we'll go ahead and get into it. Four seats. Plus these two jump seats in the back. The same on the other side. This one is a live well, it's still got my minnow bucket in there. And this one is a cooler. There's nothing in it, there's just a drain and a plug. You plug it up and I use it for dry storage too. Passenger side, rod locker. Let's see, I got six or eight rods in there. I think the longest one is seven foot. Uh, onboard charger underneath the console for two batteries. Driver's side, there's a little storage back here behind the, the mesh. And then here's the helm. Uh, a depth finder, obvious gauges and so on. And uh, the four stroke sounds like this. Starts like that every time. It's got a little stereo. I'm not really impressed with it. Don't like it, but whatever. Some people would. Um, then up front, this side has a pretty decent sized live well. That's usually where I care, catch mine and keep them from the guys in the back because it's bigger and mine are usually bigger. Um, this side is 
shape of storage. It's just triangle shaped storage. And there's a little storage up front. Kind of the same thing. And then there's obviously a little compartment up here that I use for the the foot control for the depth for the trolling motor, which I've never even hooked up. It's just there in case I run out of batteries for the remote as a backup. The little rants up front. And again the trolling motor. It's an 80 pound mm, eight month old, I think. And everything's wired and functioning properly in front of the captain's chairs, your fuse box. And that should just about do it. The walkthrough windshield is functioning 100%. There's nothing wrong with it. Glass is all in good shape. Open and shut. The latches work. They're not broken or anything. Both of them are intact. And there's a four rod rod holder in the back that I put on myself. If you don't want it, it's two bolts to take it off. Not a big deal. And that is basically it in a nutshell. Um, when I exit on a trailer, I usually come off on the swim platform. It's a little bit easier to get in and out of. The Mercury itself, the um, main motor, will troll down to, I think it's down to 0.8 miles per hour on a windless day, uh, which is plenty for trolling crankbaits. You don't even need a kicker. Top speed on the GPS is about 35, give or take, depending on what you got in it. And that's what you can expect from it. Try to get you one more good side look. Both sides. A little glare on that one. Walk around to the other side. And it does have a little bit of dock rash, but nothing to be too concerned about, like the L and the U and the Lund. And then it's got a couple of scrapes too, but that's just windy days or what have you. doesn't leak unless uh, there's, there's something with the, uh, I think it's the overspill from the, the rear aerator. Uh, I think once it's overfills, it, it fills a little bit into the hole. You won't get any water in the hole unless you run the aerator pump for more than eight hours. So when you do that, you will have some, but that's just from overspill coming out of the live well in the back. Can't really pinpoint where that is and it's never really been a big problem for me so that's what I got. Motors in 02. I can get serial numbers or whatever but uh, I should have popped that. It's just as clean on the inside as it is on the outside. As you probably heard, it was uh, fused on there quite well because I've been taking it off. Had no reason to take the cowling off all season. Had the oil changed in the spring. New plugs put in it every year. Just doesn't need them. I just put them in. And then there's no reason to even monkey with it till the end of the season. Just to winterize it. That's her. And there's the actual serial number. So you know that the date is true because it ends in the 02. 2000 Lund Fisherman, 1700.